Ain't that what Ray Hagen said? One more time. One more time. God allowed us to come together. Thank you, Pastor Ray, for that beautiful, beautiful um song. It's really touching. How y'all doing today? <laughs> it, never, it never fails. Zeus always starts going crazy when I begin to record. So anyway, I had to break him off. Uh, you know, we were talking last week about homophobia. Well, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, my illustrious family. Whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, I want to thank you. Thank you. For uh, letting me be a part of your day. And welcome to the mental house with me. Your host, Khadija. You know, I I really, really, you know, I don't, the human family has really, really, you know, have taken a lot of hits not being able to address our mental illness, and that's for so many of us. Um, I watched a vi- uh, somebody sent me a clip on yesterday of a man that was on top of a bridge in Memphis, and I know a lot of y'all might have saw that. And um, you know they were filming him down below, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, uh, this is like the highest point of the interstate. And I think I heard somebody say, oh, look at him. Because he put his hand up. Oh, Lord have mercy. God, your people are hurting. Your people are hurting. Your people. They need a healing. Um, He put his hand up, y'all. And I'm sure a lot of y'all saw it. Every time I think about it, I get choked up. And jumped his self. Head first off the overpass. And then everybody down below was screaming. I mean, this is like midday this dude does that. Oh, God. And all I could be thinking, all I keep thinking about it is what was happening in his life. So bad. Because it must have been, you know, you don't just wake up and decide to do that. It must have been going bad for a while. And that's why I do this show, because there's so much stuff crazy happening that um, people need to get a break, because this shit here, you know, shit trickles downstream. And if people were suffering this bad, what that means is the people up top are doing it. Uh... You know, people are losing it. And um, like I said, you don't just wake up overnight and decide to, I'm going to jump off the highest point of the damn bridge. There must have been some shit going on in your life for a long time, for like forever. Like a dark cloud circling around over you that you would just do something like that in front of everybody. I just can't. Everybody traumatized. That saw that um, footage. And um, that's what America is. It's just a big traumatized place. The whole, you know, the world. And, um, you know, we need prayer. We, so each and every one of y'all who have joined me today that's on this side of the dirt, I thank you for being there. And I hope to God that um, if you need some help in any kind of way, that you can seek it and that you can get it, even if it's just talking to somebody. Cause I don't like to see that kind of that that shit. That was this that just took me totally. That was very sad. That was very sad. Anyway, 
another thing I want to talk about is, you know, we talked about the homophobia again in the church and all that hypocrisy everywhere. And, you know, I think about Sigmund Freud, who um, <laughs> I have to give him, him his credit uh, when he said a lot of bases of a lot of problems in a human being is because they sexually repress natures and then uh, in, inhibited from expressing and being who they are. So at least you can see it. Like you say, you want to see your, um, like a lot of people I hear, especially black folk. Oh, let me see the race. Let me see the races. So I can know where he at. I like my races straight up and chase, you know, with no chaser. So I know how to deal with them. Okay. It's one way of looking at it. But why don't you feel that way about everybody? Why don't now? That way we'll be able to identify a pedophile. Not just because the person is a, a homosexual. You'll be able to identify, oh, because he up front with it. He telling you, oh, yeah, I like to uh, have sex with 11-year-old girls. Yeah, I like to break them in. Um, yeah, that's how. So now you have a choice to do the same thing to him that you was going to do to somebody who you deemed the other. Right? We don't want to look at it like that, for those of y'all who follow me. Because I'm looking at this article today, and it's the, it's so messed up. Rap pioneer Kid Creo is found guilty of fatally stabbing a homeless man in New York City who he thought was gay. Member of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five now faces 25 years in jail. That is a bullshit story. Because there is so many people in New York that's gay and somebody that you've been on the road that made a hit with you and made a, made a hit uh, hit on you or was in your a managerial team. Um, all of a sudden, you so homophobic that you would stab a homeless man because you thought he was gay and he was... Let me just read the story to you. Um Artist 62, whose real name is Nathaniel Glover, was found guilty by a uh, jury hours after closing arguments. He fatally stabbed uh, John Jolly. Now, he's 62. He my age. And he just stabbed somebody 55. You mean tell me he that homophobic because somebody was gay? This dude was crazy as hell. And if he been in show business like I've been in show business, I already know. You've been around gay people all over the damn place. From your stylist. See, get to me. Okay. He fatally stabbed man, uh, John Jolly, 55, on August 1st, 2017, in Manhattan. Glover was arrested the day after and has been in custody at Rikers Island since, ever since he did it. Glover killed Jolly's life in cold blood, the prosecutor said. He took his life in cold blood. He faces a prison sentence of up to 25 years when he is sentenced May 4th. Now, he was a member of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, known for that track, uh, The Message. Um, it was long for a lot of stuff. The influential group in 2007 was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, Kid Creole, what the hell? Are you kidding me? 25 years in jail. Oh, you got to be joking. You got to be joking me. <clears throat> the story goes, y'all. First of all, at 62 years old, you ready to go spend the rest of your damn life in jail? Oh, oh you did. <laughs> you're, you're dead. What the hell? You making them kind of, you made that kind of choice. The 62-year-old artist, uh, his real name is Nathaniel Glover, dropped his head, I know. When the jury delivered the verdict, an eyewitness told the court, he, this dude was on drugs or something. This is what happened when you get about the business and ain't nobody checking for you no more because you ain't the hottest thing. You just running around um, 
on some other shit. And not getting the health, you don't have the health care, you don't have any of the things that you might uh, have experienced while you was hot. A wounded Jolly was found by tourists minutes after he was attacked. And Glover fled the scene and went to his office where he washed the knife and later disposed of it in a sewer in the Bronx subway station. All that, dude, why? Police recovered the weapon the following day and Glover was arrested. He has been charged with second degree murder in connection with the stabbing. He has been in custody. I said that already. This man had mentally mental illness and it was untreated. Uh, he said Glover told authorities in a tape interview that he was a little annoyed in thinking that Jolly was seeking a romantic encounter. Why? To tell the truth, I thought he was gay because I thought he was, uh, uh, I just thought he was gay. And I thought he was saying to me, what's up? I was thinking that he was thinking that I was gay. And in a police interview, he added that he got a little nervous when Jolly approached him. Now, this dude got a braid down the back. And he's undercover already. Because if you think that, I don't think you gay and always have been, I don't understand. You in denial? Or you mess around on a down low or something? Because in order for you to have just went nuts like that, you not only have repressed sexual, allegedly, issues, allegedly, you have way more things, problems that you just did just because this guy is gay and came up to you and said, what's up? What the hell? Glover, who was not aware that Jolly had died the following after the stabbing at the time, told the interview, I tried to back up a little bit, you know, but he moved forward. And then I just took out my knife and I stabbed him. I wish I never would have seen him. It's all my fault because I chose to stab him. Yes. You got to take responsibility. Yes. Why? I'm sorry, y'all. This is just too sick. This is what I mean by making these. You, when you're young and hot-headed and you don't have the. He, I ain't talking about him because that's another whole thing. I know when you get older, you get a little bit cantankerous. But because you talking about you thought he was gay, that's where I get off the butt, uh, bus at. This dude been all around the world. With uh, Grandmaster Flash. And you telling me you homophobic like that. Get the hell out of here. They've been all over. All over. And all around you. And y'all. In the case, prosecutors said that Glover didn't have any reason to be afraid of Jolly. And linked his actions with potential homophobia. It says that the, uh, the defense said that Glover was fearful of Jolly and that Jolly's death was due to him having a uh, had a combination of alcohol and a sedative he was given. Yeah, but he stabbed. Yeah, right. All I'm saying is, I don't want to just, like, kid, Korea, I can't believe you did this. And now you're going to jail at 60 something years old. <sighs> Potentially for 25 years. Because you stabbed this guy, which makes no fucking sense. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. Glover, who was not, um, again, he wasn't even aware of, of of the death of Scott. He kept saying, I don't know why I did it. Anyway, Chelsea said the medical records attained of Jolly's death indicated that the stabbing didn't kill him. But prosecutors forged on with the case. Um, out of self-preservation and the testimony of witnesses in the case was tainted and uh, slanted in helping prosecutors in their incompetent and malicious attempt to convict Glover. Celeste noted how Glover repeatedly told police he didn't want to hurt Jolly. So what's go what? This, this is the sickest. Uh, it's one of the most craziest cases because it makes no sense. That's why I said, when you get my age, unless you stone crazy, you'd have been around gay people 
you don't feel like some of these homophobic people that you I'm talking about, especially the hypocrites in the church. Because you come to a point where you just be like, let their wisdom take over. You know I mean, your wisdom be, is that people do what they want to do. That's like me telling you how to come in your house and raise your kids. You don't want to hear that. Boosie don't want to hear nobody talking about telling him or uh, uh, what he should let um, uh, 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 Tootie Raw do. He'll get very angry with you. And like I said, as a mandated report, as many times as, as as much as I say, oh, Boosie is a, is ignorant. I will have to report him, right? But you don't want nobody telling you what to do with your kids. And you get a certain age, you don't give a damn what nobody is doing. That's why they call it privacy. That's your private life and your private business. And as long as you're not raping people or hurting people, you have no business inflicting your craziness and your mental insecurity on other people. It's just not right. It's just not fair. And this dude, this got to be more to this story, you guys. That's all I'm saying. I just can't believe that he's facing 25 years on something so fucking crazy. And I know he's been around gay people. And around the village, everywhere. I mean, I just, Kid Creole is going, possibly going to jail at 62 years old from the pioneer hip-hop movement group. Grandmaster Flash. I don't know if y'all heard this story, but if you have, chime in on it. What y'all think about this? It's insanity. And I'm praying for everybody's mentals this morning. Y'all go out and make it a beautiful day. Through the murk. If it ain't no beauty, you got to make some beauty. Have mercy. Listen to me, y'all.